Hey guys, ever wondered how to make a mallet? Well, in this clip, I'm gonna show you how to do that, at least how I do it. This mallet that we're gonna be making right now is a custom mallet that I'm making for a customer of mine that was one of my first customers when I started here in this company last year. Now, and also eventually, I'll even show you how to break a bandsaw blade. Perfect. We will begin the planning process by planning the roughs on runners. These are discarded or unusable runners that I've taken from the guys out in the yard. This is really nice, Kyle. Where, where'd you get the wood from? Don't be taking my good wood. <laughs> if I got runners and stuff I can use, don't be stealing it. For these stinky little hammers. I promise I'm not. I can't promise that. I sort of, I can't promise that. I usually measure the heads and cut them at about six or seven inch lengths, depending on who or what they're going to be used for. The six inch is for more gentle use, and the longer ones are for heavier use. It's important to note that precision measurements are not really needed here, as they're probably going to be beat up, and so I got a wider margin for error on these things. Keep in mind that the mallets are in their testing stages, really. I have absolutely zero idea what I'm doing here, so I hope to get better the more you roast me mercilessly for my errors and such. Using a miter saw, I cut the runners along the marked lines. That way I get a rough mallet head and let it dry a bit to see how it's gonna dry. After a day or two of drying, I will to check to see where it will crack or check and determine it's gonna be good enough to use. This footage I almost forgot to add into the video. After I set aside the mallet heads, I take the best six quarter lumber I can find and cut it down to rough widths. I then take those rough cuts and measure out the final lengths of the handles to be cut. They're generally about 13 inches total with about 2 or 3 inches ending up inside the mallet's head. After I measure out the handle blanks to the desired lengths, I will then cut the handles with a circle saw or a skill saw. Not a sponsor by the way. And the speed square wasn't really needed as these things don't need to be square. It just helps keeping everything straight in the end. Now this has got to be one of my favorite parts. I first cut out the rough shape with a grinding wheel and then I come in with a flap disc grinder and shape it out give it that hand hewn look that you see in the mallets but I gotta let you guys know the video you're watching does not do them justice these bird's eye maple handles are truly one of a kind using a small bandsaw I cut slots for the wedges Perfect. Perfection. <laughs> A few minutes later. Now adding wedges to the mallets is just an extra precautionary step as I use freshly cut or green mallet heads and kiln dried lumber for the handles. So that when the mallet head dries, it'll shrink around the kiln dried mallet handle, essentially sealing it on the handle for years to come. Now back to the mallet heads. I will measure out the center of the mallet head, then I will drill a hole into the center of the mallet's head, creating a space for the handle. Now this is the only step that requires any sort of precision, because as you can imagine, if I don't cut this hole right, the handles will be crooked. After I drill the hole, I will typically let the mallet head dry for about a day or two, just to see what it does, before I make a decision on whether to use it or not. Now after I move forward with the mallet head that I like, I will sand it with a 36 to 50 grit sandpaper to remove anything that I don't like about it and to run off the corners. I've also been thinking about adding a thumb slot to the side of the mallets to aid in precision striking. So here I am mixing the glue with the sawdust. It helps to fill the gaps between the mallet head and the handle to secure a better bond. Then I will apply the mixture to the hole and then add some glue to the handle just to make sure that everything's all glued up. This step is just another added process along with the wedge to make sure that the handle stays on the head. Then quickly I violently jam the mallet's handle into the head forming a secure bond, making sure that it stays on there for a long time. Then I wipe off any excess glue around the handle and the head, just to make sure to clean things up. So as the mallet head dries, it's important to let the mallet head and the handle fully bond together. 
This drying period is crucial to the durability and longevity of the mallet overall. So as I explained earlier, we use wet mallet heads and kiln dried handles, right? So along with that, with the glue and the wedges, that will ensure that the handles will stay on there forever. So sometimes I'll use an end grain sealer on the mallet heads after I cut them. It just kind of helps to, to avoid cracking and checking. You know, try to avoid the keyword. Oh my God. Am I even recording still? <laughs> the keyword is try. You know, it's lumber, it's wood. Wood's going to do whatever the f it wants. So now we set the mallet aside and let it for a few months to let it dry. Let the mallet head shrink around the handle. So I'm thinking about splitting this video into two parts. As the mallets dry, um, I'm gonna show you how I finish it, how I sand it, finish it. And if you wanna see how this lumber, like the runners, were made in the first place, click on the logs to lumber video that's coming up right now, pow, 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 and you get to see how our lumber's made. Thanks. <laughs>